Welcome to Optimal Anesthesia, we explore key topics in perioperative medicine. Today, we're diving into a vital aspect of diabetes management, HbA1c. What it is, why it matters, and how it impacts patient care, especially in surgical settings. And we're going to do it with an interesting twist, imagine blood sugar like sugar attracting flies. To kick things off, let's break down what HbA1c is. Imagine your bloodstream is a kitchen, and hemoglobin is like a set of dinner plates. When glucose, or sugar, is in your blood, it's like leaving out sugar in the kitchen. Just like how sugar attracts flies, glucose attaches to hemoglobin. Let's break it down step by step. 1. Glucose Entry Glucose can freely enter red blood cells through special gateways called glucose transporters. Think of these transporters as toll booths that let glucose into the bloodstream. 2. Initial binding. Once inside, glucose molecules attach to the amino groups on hemoglobin. This initial binding is like putting a sticky note on the hemoglobin, it's there, but it can still be removed. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty of how this process becomes permanent. Shift base formation, the reversible interaction between glucose and the amino group on hemoglobin forms a shift base, also known as aldamine. Imagine the sticky note turning into a post-it that sticks a bit better. Amadori rearrangement, over time, the shift base undergoes a chemical transformation called the Amadori rearrangement. This rearrangement creates a more stable compound, turning our sticky note into a super glue bond. This stable form is called glycated hemoglobin, or HbA1c. So, why is HbA1c important? Well, the percentage of hemoglobin with glucose attached, the HbA1c level, reflects the average blood sugar levels over the lifespan of a red blood cell, about 120 days. This measurement is most accurate for the last 8 to 12 weeks. Think of it as counting the flies on the plates over a period of time, it gives a clearer picture of how sugary your kitchen has been. For anyone managing diabetes, this is crucial. Regular blood sugar tests are like snapshots, they show you a moment in time. But HbA1c is like a movie, it shows you the whole story over several months. It's the gold standard for monitoring how well someone is managing their diabetes. This long-term view is especially important for anesthesiologists. Why? Because understanding a patient's HbA1c level can influence how we manage their care during surgery. Let's explore what different HbA1c values mean and their implications for anesthetic management. HbA1c values below 5.7% indicate non-diabetic blood sugar levels. For anesthesiologists, this means no significant implications for surgical or anesthetic management beyond standard care. Patients in this range generally don't need special interventions related to blood sugar control, so you can proceed with standard anesthetic protocols. Moving up, HbA1c values between 5.7% and 6.4% fall into the pre-diabetes range. This indicates higher than normal blood sugar levels, not high enough to be classified as diabetes. Increased risk for developing diabetes, requiring closer monitoring and potential lifestyle interventions. For anesthesiologists, awareness is key here. These patients have a higher risk of perioperative hyperglycemia, so keeping an eye on their blood sugar levels during and after surgery is essential. Let's discuss HbA1c values of 6.5% and above, which indicate diabetes. These can be further broken down into three categories, controlled diabetes, 6.5% to 7.0%. Effective management suggests effective diabetes management, but still requires ongoing monitoring and adjustment of treatment plans. 
Patients in this range are generally managing their diabetes well, but anesthesiologists should still monitor blood sugar levels to prevent any perioperative spikes or drops. Moderately elevated, 7.0% to 8.0%. Need for better control, indicates a need for better glycemic control. Possible adjustments in medication or lifestyle may be required. Anesthetic management, these patients may require more careful monitoring and potentially preoperative adjustments to their medication or insulin regimen to optimize blood sugar levels before surgery. High HbA1c, above 8%. Poorly controlled diabetes, suggests poorly controlled diabetes, necessitating comprehensive review and intervention. Preoperative planning requires detailed preoperative assessment and optimization of glycemic control to minimize surgical risks. High HbA1c levels are associated with increased risks of infection, poor wound healing, and cardiovascular complications during and after surgery. As we already said that red cells have a lifespan of about 120 days, and their turnover rate can affect HbA1c values. If the turnover is slow, we see more old red cells with attached glucose, leading to falsely high HbA1c values. This is common in patients with vitamin B12 or folate deficiency anemia. On the other hand, if the turnover is rapid, it results in more young red cells with less attached glucose, producing falsely low HbA1c values. Conditions like chronic hemolysis, treatment for iron, vitamin B12, or folate deficiency, and erythropoietin treatment can cause this. Next, let's discuss hemoglobin variants. Certain genetic variants of hemoglobin can affect HbA1c measurements. However, modern methods for measuring HbA1c are generally robust against most common variants. The National Glycohemoglobin Standardization Program NGSP, provides detailed info on this. Now, let's consider chronic kidney disease CKD. Advanced CKD, especially in patients undergoing hemodialysis or receiving erythropoietin treatment, can affect HbA1c levels. Hemodialysis and altered red cell turnover can decrease measured HbA1c levels, making them less reflective of actual blood glucose levels. Sometimes, HbA1c values don't match up with expected blood glucose results. Here's what you can consider. Situation where higher than expected HbA1c1, patients might report better blood glucose management than what is true. 2. High blood glucose after meals might not be captured by preprandial tests. Monitoring between meals or using continuous glucose monitoring CGM, can help. 3. Dot conditions like vitamin B12 or folate deficiency anemia can lead to falsely elevated HbA1c. Situations where lower than expected HbA1c1, low blood glucose during the night might not be detected. Adjusting monitoring times or using CGM can reveal these patterns. 2. Reduced red cell survival conditions like hemolysis or recovery from anemia lead to a higher proportion of young red cells, causing falsely low HbA1c. Blood transfusions can also lower HbA1c levels. 3. While most assays are unaffected by common hemoglobinopathies, it's crucial to confirm with the lab that the assay used is appropriate. To sum it up, HbA1c is a powerful tool in diabetes management. It offers a comprehensive view of blood sugar levels over time, guiding both everyday diabetes care and critical decisions in the operating room. Thank you for joining us on Optimal Anesthesia today. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, feel free to reach out. Until next time, stay healthy and stay informed.